Hi there, I'm Camila Lopez. I'm hi, Camila Lopez. Oh, hi, Carol. <laughs> Just by accident, we happen to show up in the same Zoom. <laughs> you know what? I, we hang I, out in the best places. What can I, I say? tell you? I tell you, many, many nights in Virginia, right? We're working for you know that 38th state, which uh, you know, which was an incredible victory. This is Camila Lopez. She is. Uh, one of the ERA, ERA uh, leaders, founders, did a fabulous film called Equal Means Equal, founded an organization called Equal Means Equal. We used her film to brief the entire country on what we were talking about. Uh, so I'm thrilled to have her uh, here because I realized in, in, as we get closer and closer, as we like to think, you know, to the adoption, that I never asked you what started you on this whole path. How did you get engaged? And so uh, to do such excellent work, by the way. Carol, um, thank you. You're very sweet. I really appreciate that. It was a total fluke. I can't say that I was looking for the Equal Rights Amendment. It found me. Um, what happened was I had made a film called A Single Woman about our first Congresswoman, Jeanette Rankin. And she was elected before women had the vote. And I just thought, wow, what a clever person. She went out and got 80,000 men to vote for her. And then she got in there and we got suffrage. And she was very, um, she was a pacifist. Anyway, I was fascinated by her. And I made a film about her based on a one woman show that my cousin had written and done. We were screening it at the Smithsonian. And I was feeling very, uh, well, equal wasn't the word. I was feeling kind of high on the hog, like I really made it, like look at me. Um, and, and we were in the lobby of the Smithsonian and I saw a woman across the way and she was dressed in full suffrage regalia. White. I, yeah, with the, the, the sash, the whole thing. Right, and right, uh, right. I had no idea what that was at that point, right, right. Uh, but I am an actress. So when I saw that woman walking around, I said, oh, God, this is what I'm going to be doing any day now. When they I... retire me from the screen, I'll be wandering the museums <laughs> in some kind of outfit. So I better go over and, you know, and engage with this person. And I just went up to her and I said, hi, um, who are you? And she, being an excellent actress, which is a very good point for public art and funding of public art because she started my whole journey. She uh, looked me dead in the eye and she said, I'm Alice Paul and I'm back to haunt you because you have done nothing to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment and women still don't have equal rights under federal law. And I just- That's, that's quite a beginning. <laughs> I was like, what? <gasps> Like, wait a minute, what? I'm directing a movie that's at the Smithsonian and you're telling me I'm not even an equal citizen under our constitution? I found that so deeply rude um, on, on so many levels. And also I felt so stupid, which I don't like to feel. I felt like I'd been hoodwinked because I had spent my entire life being told that I could be, do, and have anything I wanted, that I was fully equal. And that if I didn't get somewhere, it was probably my fault. I had worked fault, hard right. enough or whatever it was. It was our fault, right? right? And boy, that's a real way to keep women down, is to have them convinced that it's their fault when in fact the system is so unequal. The whole thing is designed for us to stay in, in a position of, less than and so that just started me on my journey because i just couldn't tolerate it and i also didn't believe it for the first couple right. of months i took me a while to really investigate it and then when it was really true i was surprised like why isn't anybody why is this true um and then i realized what you know from having done the polling that the era coalition did that to discover that a vast majority of Americans have no idea that this yeah. is the case. And they were right, like, right. Me, they thought they were equal. Right. So, so you foolish, know, foolish us, right? Thinking, you know. Well, I we think were. it's been a deliberate, um, it's been a deliberate campaign to keep women 
from knowing this and not just women, all of us, because I, I truly believe that men are not opposed to our equality in general terms. The men that I know are, are very happy to share power with yeah. us. I so, so what, so what, Kamala, what, what do you think it is? And, and how are you feeling about the ERA in 2020, uh, these days? Well, I think we have great momentum, Carol. I think we've done our work across this nation, the hundreds of groups and organizations that have fought on the ground in all the unratified states, in the ratified states, just throwing house parties, talking about it, doing panels, showing the movie, showing the little movie, doing a college, um, you know, awareness, awareness, education, advocacy. We've been quite consistent for a while now, and I think it's starting to really take hold in we saw just a month ago that 91 of the top companies in the United States and possibly in the world signed on to an amicus brief in support of our lawsuits um, protecting ERA right, uh, right. from Apple to uh, Morgan Stanley to Citigroup to Google yes, and, to everybody and so the next no step Cammy, the next step is to make sure that corporate America, you know, pays women equally, you know, across the board as, uh, as, as well, uh, because women are still, as some would say, the cheap labor of this uh, country. Um, cheap and you know, unpaid why? labor. We do 100 million hours a year in unpaid labor. Right. And then, as you know, Latinas are making 44 cents on the white male dollar. African-American women about 67, 68. And right. white women somewhere around 78. So imagine the trillions of dollars that we are literally being ripped off every year. And exactly. that's why that's why we're, we haven't seen it happen. And so my point is this. If we get to the Supreme Court, and they find some excuse, because it truly will be some kind of a technical excuse to keep withhold from women that which is God-given, which is our basic dignity as human beings and equal rights, then I think we need to think very long and hard about following these laws. And we need to look outside the box, like Jeanette Rankin did. Because right. why... Why do we have such a lawless administration when it suits, but we're all supposed to toe the line? I think women have to stop towing that line. Um, if, if the Supreme Court, now, I have great faith that the Supreme Court will say, how can the United States of America not provide its population with equal civil rights? I don't know. I why do I, yeah, Cammy, Cammy, why do I feel some massive protest movement stirring in your heart there? We'll all be following you in the streets. Well, you know, we're going to have to move to the streets if we cannot get justice in the courts or from our government. And so we see the, uh, and we talked about this briefly, the intersectionality made manifest, right? We've all been trying as women of color, Carol, to explain to people what it feels like to have multiple levels of discrimination on you that that just you know is kind of crushing you down and now people are, are more open to that and i think the dovetailing of our movements is so critical the fact that bostock which was an important case about gay and lesbian and um uh, lgbtq uh, rights the fact that the supreme court said yes sex covers all rainbows of people bodes extremely well for us in the Supreme Court because it means that the, that people's sex is protected in the way that anything else, their race, their uh, ethnicity, their religion, these are all protected classes. And we, if we get ERA, will be protected as well. And it will have such a huge effect on violence, decreasing right. violence. On, on everything. Now, you're such a good organizer and did such a terrific job in the uh, elections, uh, trying to get pro ERA people uh, into the state legislature. What, what do you, how do you see this November in terms of the vote, uh, voter suppression, uh, making sure that, that pro ERA candidates up and down the ticket uh, are, are voted in? What, what are you looking at there? So I think there's some really good people out there doing great work. Like um, one of our partners and your partner in um, Virginia, which was previously called VA Ratify ERA, right. 
Katie Hornung and previously Eileen Davis's group are now forming something called Vote Equality USA. And what they're doing is they're focused on eight Senate races. Because truly, Carol, we know that the Senate has been intransigent. Um, they, they refused to vote on ERA, on lifting the deadline, even though it passed in, in the House. So we're seeing that, just like in Virginia, after going there for four years, year after year, to speak to them, to educate them, there's a certain point that you get to where maybe you don't know what everything is going on underneath. Maybe there's graft. Maybe there's favoritism. We don't know. But what we do know is some people are not going to vote for equality. And those right. people have to be removed. They cannot right. be cajoled. They cannot be jollied along. You cannot continue to be polite with them. We've got to just get them out. And that's why we moved to the peanut farms, as you referenced, for months. And, um, you know, it was a very big culture shock for me. I have never been anywhere. LA, um, LA girl, producer, actor, moves to the peanut farm. No, I'm a New York, I'm a Brooklyn girl, really. <laughs> I mean, I, I went to Midwood High School. I'm from Flatbush, you know, uh, I was right, in right. New York City. Um, and, and I moved to Los Angeles after college, but I had never lived somewhere rural, or I didn't even know how to pronounce it. Right. And, um, I had also never lived somewhere where the people had been treated so poorly. Um, they had been racially um, treated so poorly. It was, a, it, it was shocking. I was shocked. Right. The, the Airbnb that we rented, when we would have our weekly Sunday dinners, Right. Um, right. The people that came over said that they had never been allowed on that street. Allowed. Wow. Allowed, yes. Carol. I didn't even know what that meant. So you you feel that a part a part of this electoral convincing people is really being with the people, and that was you must, you know, you just must, a tre you tremendous just thing. And we're we're delighted to we're delighted to have you know Katie Ornig and her and her newly formed group, so powerful in the Virginia effort. Uh, yeah. in our coalition and you guys in our yeah in our and you know what we've got it like basically you have to find in your state wherever you are who is educating on the era because you will get women to the polls black women latinas if you can i also have my movie in spanish that i'm going to start um finding ways to get out there we have to tenemos que hablarle a la gente en español porque right. si no le hablamos en una lengua que entienden, no van a entender por qué tienen que votar y por qué es tan importante y por qué tiene que ver con ellos. Because a lot of Latinos are intimidated and scared. They're being intimidated by ICE every day. They're right. being intimidated by, from the very top, by, by very cruel language and sadistic behavior. Their children, people they know have their children rips from, ripped from their breasts and thrown into cages. I mean, there's a lot of work to do in that community to, to make them feel safe because even if they can vote, Carol, they know somebody that's undocumented. Right, And right. so they're scared that they're gonna bring attention upon the, themselves and perhaps put somebody they love in danger. Right. And so uh, it's all of, it's, it's so many things that, you know, but what's true, you know, we all agree that the ERA has moved from that niche category to the center of our lives. You know, what, what, what I often say is that we're, if we're talking about systemic racism and sexism, there's nothing more systemic than the Constitution. It is the system. And that, that ha that's system. exactly what has to be changed. Kevin Lopez. We'll have to do this again. Carol I Jenkins. You. I want to thank you so much. I'm saying I'm honored to be interviewed by the great Carol <laughs> Jenkins. You know, growing your mama. up in New York, my parents watched you every day. Of I know. Course. Please give my love to your mother. She's adorable. I will. Okay. I will. Thank Thanks you so very much. Take Thanks, care. Kevin. Onward and upward. That's ERA, right. ERA, ERA now. Everybody focus on it and it'll make everybody's life so much better. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Kimmy.